A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. More about them at the end of the video. Good morning everybody, welcome back to another documentary by the Bros of DK. I'm Leslie and as you can see today we are standing in the middle of the woods. And we actually slept here last night because I have my new van with me and we are converting it into a nice living space to travel around Europe with. And this weekend we are testing it out here in Switzerland. Just put some mattresses in there. I have Jeroen with me today, a William as well over there in the car, just chilling on his phone. We're getting ready to explore another amazing place here in the countryside of Luxembourg. It shouldn't be far from here, so uh, I will not let you wait any longer. Let's hop in the van and let's go to this abandoned house. It should be wonderful. Yes. Let us take you today on another journey to wonderful Switzerland. We will give you a glimpse of how life used to be like more than a century ago in this unique and historically rich country. In 1824, a rather typical Swiss farming family decided to build a charming house somewhere along their fields, in the middle of the country. They did this with great pride, and the end product is a piece of eye candy. Over many generations, beautiful memories were made inside the walls of this house. From father upon son, the owners stayed traditional Swiss farmers and lived simple but happy lives. But unfortunately, nothing lasts forever. At a certain point around the year 2005, the last generation broke tradition. Times had changed and they chose to live their lives in the nearby cities. The farmhouse got abandoned with all the once built up memories still left inside. Today we will go on an investigation and open the doors for one last time. So we just arrived at the house over here. I think the outside is just fantastic. Completely overgrown by trees over the years that it's been abandoned. It's probably a very old house. I heard that it was from the 19th century. So yeah. Let's have a little closer look before we go inside. As you can see, typically switch Swiss with the wooden beams around the windows, woodwork everywhere throughout the house. And it just started to rain. So I think we're going to make our way inside. The grass over here is also growing very high over the years. Okay, I have to hop over here. I'm gonna take the camera from you, William. So, William is filming me today. Thank you very much, my man. Oh, let's turn on the light because it's getting quite dark here. Yes. And here we're coming into the backyard of the house. Okay, I'm ready to explore this place. An 18th, 19th century, excuse me, Swiss farm left behind and forgotten. The crates to work on the field with, to, to get the produce inside and transport it back over here to the farm. Let's see. And here we're coming to the back side of the house. It's totally falling apart as you can see. Everything is falling apart. It's all fallen here on a big pile. Even the frame of the bed, you can see here, still standing. Well, come in here, come in here. You can see some old appliances, 
this is probably a, a grain mill that they used to use. I think this was a grain mill, I'm not 100% sure. You can see an old wheel behind there. A sift to sift the grains that they got from the fields. Wow. Look at these chops of wood that they gathered probably to build furniture. There are hundreds of these stacked over here. And a wagon to transport some goods with. <laughs> Look at that, William. I love the building style of these Swiss houses. So much wood, so much natural materials used to build their house. And this car over here is also fantastic. It has no wheel anymore. Wow. But something caught my interest while walking into this backyard. And you can see it over there. It's some sort of a cave. Oh, before that, the boots of the former owner are lying here, still on the ground after all those years. Well, let's venture in here. I've just, wow, built from stones. Whoa, echo. <laughs> See the spider webs have been gathering over here, guarding this place. I think this was some sort of a food storage place for the house because underground is always cool. And this is where they indeed used to store their drinks. As you can see, there are still some drinks left behind. They're still full. Wow. There's some sort of cork on there. Uh, that's pretty slimy. I, I, I always smell things and I shouldn't do it. <laughs> I know, but... Yeah, an underground cave to store food and drinks. Pretty special. You think it's made by hand? Looks like it, right? Yes. You can see here. Uh, so, so, some sort of a clay. Then they had this big door to shut it off. Oh. There's even light in here. Oh, they even had a light indeed, yes. Wonderful. Let's go back out. And I think this is the way to get into the house. We have one more little shed over here. I'm gonna take the camera from you. Okay. Let's have a look. Okay, I have the, the bicycle of the person is here. Oh, there's still even number plate on the bicycle here. Lovely. Was this an electric or a, a motor-driven bicycle? Yes, indeed. How do you call this in English? I have no clue. But it's very common for the Netherlands and for Europe. I don't think in America and other countries people use these things. But they were very common over here. A storage shed with paint cans and all the things that they need to fix up the house. As you can see. Wonderful. Let's now go into the house and explore that 19th century Swiss house. Let's go. We're gonna go inside of this one, but I think we have to be really careful because everything is falling apart here. There was also a little sign in the front of the house that said, hey, if you go in here, you're responsible for yourself. And if you injure yourself, it's on your own. So <laughs> I saw a little window opening here and that leads us into the house. As you can see, we can see the kitchen from here. They also had this outside cabinet to store some things maybe when they had dinner outside or who knows what but let's hop inside and let's see what we can discover in this place okay coming with me yes <laughs> yes welcome inside of the kitchen a very traditional Swiss kitchen like we always see them when we explore Swiss places. I must say I only have explored three Swiss places before but all of them had the same style of kitchen and this one is by far 
the oldest and old school one that I've seen in Swiss places. How they are built, stone and then an iron layer on top and you can put your cooking pots in here and you would make a live fire inside of here. The cooking pots are all left behind, like you can see, spider webs are covering it. I'm pretty curious how long this place is abandoned. And sometimes you can see it from the produce that are left behind here. But here we have some cleaning products that are completely covered by spider webs. This costs 8.60 francs. And francs is the Swiss currency. It's a little bit less than euro, so I think it's 90 francs for euro. Uh, or vice versa, 90 uh, euro cents for one franc. That's the conversion. Oh, we have some coffee here. Okay, there should be a date on here somewhere. Let's see if I can locate it. Not immediately. No. On the top? Yeah. No, you can't read it anymore. No. Okay. That's lovely. Coke bottles, indeed. And this logo that we see on here has not been used for a very long time. I don't even recognize it. Do you? Have you seen one like this before? Maybe in abandoned places, but uh, not uh, at home. Okay. So this place has probably been abandoned for a very long time. <laughs> Kitchen cloth. Wonderful. And here, you put the fire blocks, the blocks of wood inside to light up the fire. I'm always wondering what this thing used to do. Normally it comes out, but it seems to be pretty stuck here. I think it's, if you put it back, yeah. There, uh, oh, the, the flow of uh, yeah. the flow of air inside of it. Yeah. Okay, to to. Ah, I understand. I understand. And they had also an oven to cook it a little bit easier than on the stove over there. And the sink, of course, very primitive, as you can see. The whole ceiling is collapsing onto the kitchen. Crazy. And here at the end, they did have a bathroom. <laughs> Sometimes you don't see a bathroom in these places, these very old places, but this one did have a toilet, a sink, so we see over here, and even a bathtub to that side. It's pretty special. Even a vacuum cleaner. Oh yeah, exactly. Good eyes, William. Here's the vacuum cleaner that I cleaned the house with. Everything is so old in here. The boiler just exposed to the side. Probably there is a date on it. Date 19 1972. This is the installation date, I think. I think so too. 19th, 9th of the yeah, 9th, 1972. Wonderful. Let's now move on to the other part of the house. Let's see what we can find over there. Whew. Here was the entrance door where the people came into the place. You can see yet again completely covered by spider webs over the years that it has been locked. It doesn't open even anymore. And it's unlocked, and it doesn't open, it's just decayed like that. And then we come into the living area. I really like how everything is designed in here. This is a style that you don't see in the country of France and Belgium, where I'm from. This is truly Swiss, with the ceilings completely made of wood, the walls completely made of wood, and just the general feeling of this room is just fascinating. Wow. Let's start off, let's, let's show the people what we are seeing. This was the dining table where the former owners of the place, probably farmers, would sit in the evening, have dinner, enjoy themselves. Just looking at this, it seems like a little tea kettle, but I'm not 100% sure what it was used for. And then here in the corner of the room, we have all the glasses that they would use in their record player to play some nice music in the evening. Just have a little bit of a vibe while being in this place. And this was what I'm talking about in the kitchen. Here you can see the stove from the other side, a very Swiss thing, a porcelain stone with uh, green tiles uh, on this one. And this stove absorbs heat like, yeah, it absorbs it and it releases it into the night. So 
In Switzerland it's very cold in the winter and these are the perfect stoves to keep the house warm even though you're not making fire. It's a wonderful piece of craftsmanship. Wow. And on top of here we can see this iron can a very old piece of equipment. There's a date. 1824 this house was built. This house is 200 years old, William. 200 years old. And you can definitely see it. And then over here we have an accountancy desk, a little desk where the owners of this place could do their, yeah, their business, could keep their accounting. Again, a wonderful piece of antique. What do we have in here? Some newsletters from the year 2001. So we can safely start to assume that this place is abandoned for around 20 years right now. It's just an advertisement newsletter. It's nothing, no, there's nothing in the drawers anymore. And here the hats of the former owners are left behind. One for the men and one for the women. Wonderful. Then we have another calendar that says 2005. Okay. And this one over here says 2004. Yeah, so around 15 to 20 years abandoned. It's safe to assume, I think. I love also the buildup of these windows. They are very typical for Switzerland. With just one little window that you can open up to let some cold air inside. And the outside is also one little window. And it's double insulation for that time. Now we, all, we build it into one window, but they used to do it into two windows. Wonderful. Ooh, there's also a bee's nest here. Look at this. The bees have made this their home. You can see that clearly? Uh, a little bit. A little bit? Okay. Lovely, lovely. These houses have been insulated pretty well. I'm really sweating in here. I have to take off my jacket because it gets too hot in here. Let's put back on my microphone and let's go further inside of this home. I think there are only two rooms downstairs here, William. So <laughs> it's gonna be a very short video, unfortunately, but that doesn't matter. I was just looking here at the beam that enters into the bedroom. And you can see how it's been worn out over the years. Do you see that really F in there? Yeah. It's wonderful. So every time somebody stepped into the bedroom, they would, yeah, would just scrape off a little bit of wood over the 200 years that this house has been in existence. <laughs> wonderful carpet, tapestry on the door here. Yes, and welcome inside of the teeny tiny bedroom that existed in this house. Lovely, just so cozy. Let's see. And it seems to be very common for Swiss places to have a medical cabinet besides the bed. Like literally every single time I encounter a Swiss bedroom, they have this medical cabinet. And you can see also the fireplace prevails through into the bedroom to heat this room up at night. So every single room in this house would have the same temperature. I'm just in love with the bed we have here in front of us. A beautiful slate bed, double mattress on there. As you can see, a very thick springy mattress. Then we have this one on top, still made after all these years. Wow. Here we have that cabinet. Let's see. These are the clothes still hanging here. A coat of the person. 
Are these men's or women's clothes? They seem like women's clothes, right? This coat is most likely for women. But this is a man's uniform, as you can see. So I don't know who of the two lived here last. Wonderful. Huh. And then in the middle of the room, a fourth sewing machine. And a wonderful piece it is. It doesn't work anymore. Path 31 sewing machine. These ones we encounter a lot in these places. And this is the cover for that sewing machine. Voila, and then you don't see it anymore. <laughs> Lovely. And this again is probably a women's jacket, I think. And I'm again not sure. It seems like a women's jacket. This one's empty, fortunately. Nothing in there anymore. Yes. Okay. Uh, one more drawer here. This is a little bit of a newer drawer. With some ties they had in here. All their clothing still left behind. That's just crazy. Clothes to work the fields with and stuff like that. <laughs> There's even machete lying here in the room. Can cut your head off, William. <laughs> well, these sunglasses. <laughs> these are crazy. But the sun with the snow here in Switzerland, it really blinds you. When there's a lot of snow and the sun shines on it, you have to have sunglasses on and really good ones. And a purse to end this room off. Okay. I saw that stairway that went upstairs, so we're gonna check that out right now and see if we can find anything on that top floor. Ah, <sighs> back through these wonderful doorways. I just love walking through this house, seeing it, experiencing it, experiencing it. The culture that these houses leave behind is just wonderful. There he goes again. Yes. Okay. There you go. It's <sighs> gonna leave my jacket here. Back outside. This is literally about to fall on my head. So <laughs> we have the stairway over here. <sighs> gonna try to climb it. Oh wow. You can give the camera to me. I'm gonna see if we can get up here. There are some steps missing from the stairway when we go upstairs. Look at this. It's completely falling apart. Oh my God. You have to be real careful going into this part. Okay. I think we are coming to some upstairs bedrooms up here. Just gonna check on William. You're okay, man? Yeah, of course. Okay, I'm there you go. Good. You're used to it, yes. We have been exploring together for like, how long have we been exploring together? Eight years? I think so. Eight years. Of the William is literally game. my partner for Airbags since eight years, everybody. And we are pretty used to uh, exploring these places. You have to, of course, still be very careful while going through here. And here we're coming up to some upstairs bedrooms. Of course, multiple people lived in this house and you can see Unfortunately, these upstairs rooms seem a little bit vandalized. Hmm. You can see some big stacks of magazines and newspapers over here. Wow. Why would they have so many newspapers bound together? Do you think you have any idea? Hmm. I love these ones that are here to the left. I was just looking for some dates, 1994, it says on here, this is the daily newspaper, they just collected these. Maybe they do it for insulation or something like that, but I'm not sure. Come inside, come inside. First off, this wonderful cabinet here in this room. Up there are multiple books left behind. Super big fan. fan. I'm not sure what kind of book this is. It's written in Swiss, so it's kind of difficult to translate. I love the style of this cabinet. 
Seems handmade. Ooh, what's in here? Some food storage in here, as you can see. Still a jar with who knows whatever is in there. It seems real. <laughs> this is really dirty. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my God. Okay, <laughs> excuse me. I don't know what was in there. Some drinks left behind here. Some plastic containers. Ooh. And the last location was in Utah that this was for milk, right? Yeah. But this is actually to store honey inside. This is what I used in Switzerland. Yeah, it's just a bucket, but these buckets were used to store honey inside. Honey buckets. Ooh, that makes a lot of noise. Let's close that beauty up. Oh, we have a big picture, but this is inside of a book. It's lovely. What kind of book are we seeing here in front of us? Probably an encyclopedia. The oldest... Uh, 1910, this book is from, but it says here the, the oldness from the world or something like that. Ah, old and my world, it says in, in German actually. Okay, I wanted to still look at these few scrolls that we have over here. I think, oh, wow, look at this. This is the house from the outside, you can see it? This is from the side view, from the right side of the house. Oh, probably the children that lived here have drawn these. Wow, isn't that just wonderful? We have a name over here. Ursula, Ursula, Hubert. Ursula, Hubert. Another. These are just leaves that they put on here and then they paint over them. Wonderful. A drawer, but unfortunately, completely empty. Okay, now a little vanity to this side where you could look at yourself in the morning when you went outside of the house. Oh, the spider webs completely covering it. And then we have another closet, and this one is definitely filled with, uh, with uh, women's clothing. You see some dresses. These look like farmer's dresses. Very basic f clothing. Wow, but I love it. And here somebody would sleep in this room. And then we have another room to this side. Not a bedroom. Wow, the bed is completely fallen apart. I don't, I don't think vandals have been in here. I think it was maybe the owner that did it themselves or that used it as storage up here. You can also see a baby crib in the corner over there. Wow. And a big wine jerk on the table. And here we have another accountancy desk, William. Oh, oh my God. And all the shoes in there. Don't walk too close. No, I'm not gonna do. But look at that. The DK in this place is just insane. You can even look into the barn up here. <laughs> wow, so much things left behind. And we do have a big stack of papers left here. You can see this is from the Swiss Alps, the skiing area in Switzerland. Lots of letters for these people. These are all the letters that they received over the years. They just collected them over here. Switzerland is such a beautiful country. I'm, I'm totally loving exploring this country. Let's see if there's anything left in this accountancy desk, but there's not. Wonderful, the relief on it, and even more clothes in this one. Wow.
if you have a horse hoof and you put it like this, the luck falls out of it, right? You have to put it like this, right? Then the luck falls inside of it. I don't know if, if anybody else has that saying, but in Dutch we have the saying, if you put it uh, upside down, then your luck falls out. We have a leather skin suitcase here to the right and a few more things. But yeah, I truly loved walking through the house to a house like this. A Swiss, far a Swiss farmer's house. What a place. Did you enjoy a house like this, William? Yeah, it's small, but... Small, but it's, yeah, just a, a step back into time and culture, I think. That's, uh, yeah, truly, truly loved it. Before I end off this week's video, I want to thank the sponsor Squarespace. Squarespace is a powerful online platform on, your, on which you can build your own website. But that's not the only thing that Squarespace can do for you. On your own website, you can also create a community because people can reply, like and share the posts that you make on there and those posts you can categorize schedule and even share to other social media platforms i know that a lot of my viewers also have a lot of passions and some of them even might consider starting their own store but squarespace already has a great e-commerce capability and on top of that you can also put extensions on your squarespace website to help you manage inventory do your sales taxes and even help you ship items around the world. And there are many more extensions to that. And there's one more great thing that I want to talk about. And that's the membership capability of Squarespace. Yeah, you can start your own gated community on your website where you can generate revenue through. You can manage these people, send them notifications and many more things. And it's very easy to use. So what do you have to do? Just go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash bros of DK to get 10% off your first domain or website. I want to thank Squarespace one more time for sponsoring this week's video and let's end it off now. What a place everybody, I truly loved it. If you did so as well, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this content and write me a nice comment telling me what you thought about this place. There's also a link in the description for Patreon, there you can support the channel and help us out going around the world and exploring these amazing places. With that all said, I will see you next week in another crazy adventure. Bye bye, I love you very much.